Okay, this is video number three for coordinate geometry. We'll accompany the uh, worksheet packet, also posted on Schoology, with uh, making make sure that after this you go through and do the U try section. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and follow my directions off to the side here, and this is being able to identify a polygon. Um, so we're going to go ahead and plot the points, and then we're just going to kind of see what we think it is. Maybe do a little bit of work off to the side, uh, but we have to have support for what we want to say. So if I take a look at this, I'm going to go ahead and plot my points. So I've got negative 3, 1. That's A. Then I've got three fives. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That's point B. And then uh, seven, negative one. So three, four, five, six, seven, negative one. That's point C. Okay, so I definitely have a triangle here. I now want to go ahead and connect the dots and see if I can figure out what type of thing this is. Well, one of the things that's nice about a triangle, since there's only three sides, we know for sure nothing's going to be parallel. So I'm not going to check slopes um, for parallel. Now, I might have something that's perpendicular. So I do need to check the slopes to see if maybe there's a right angle somewhere. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out the lengths of each side. So I'm going to figure out if any of the sides are uh, congruent to each other. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go from A to B first. So I'm going to make my right triangle out here from A to B. And I think I'm going to go ahead and color code this guy red. All right. Okay, so if I count these, I've got one, two, three, four for that, and then one, two, three, four, five, six for this. All right, I gotta figure out how long AB is itself. Remember, when we're going through and finding distances in the coordinate plane, if they're slanted, you're always gonna be looking for the hypotenuse. It's actually kind of nice. We know that for sure. So to find the length of AB, I know that my sides are four and six. I'm gonna set up Pythagorean theorem here. So a four squared plus six squared is equal to C squared, where C is not the corner itself. C is the hypotenuse that I'm looking for. If that's confusing at all, you know that you can call it anything else. Um, you can call it X and Y and Z if you wanted to. Okay, so this is going to give me 16 plus, 36 is equal to c squared. If I add those together, that's going to give me a 52 equals c squared. I'm going to square root. And so I know c is going to be equal to the square root of 52, which means I know how long ab is. So ab is equal to the square root of 52. Uh, which if I typed this into my calculator, it'd be a tiny bit bigger than seven, just a tiny bit. All right, I'm gonna go through and do the exact same thing for the other sides. So it's a little bit of practice. Now would be a good time to pause the video, practicing doing distance, and see if we can find the length from B to C. Okay, so now let's go ahead and catch up. So I would draw in my triangle from B to C. I'm going to have to use green this time as my color coding. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four distance here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six distance here. Oh, this one's kind of nice. I see that it matches the red. So from B to C, I'm going to set it up. So know that I'm going to get 6 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. Notice that it matches the exact same lengths of 4 and 6 that I used back from AB. So I'm not going to do the extra work. I already know what it is. It's going to be the square root of 52. Okay, so basically I have two line segments that are the exact same length. All right. I'm um, getting an idea of what's happening with this triangle and uh, getting a better idea of whether or not 
it's going to be uh, scalene, equilateral, or isosceles. All right, now again is a great time to pause. See if you can find the length of AC, and then when you're ready, go ahead and unpause and catch up with me. Let's see if we match. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and find my triangle from A to C. And let's see what we get here. Okay, so down is 2, and then across is going to be 10. All right, so I've got a 2 and a 10. Not the same measurements as um, the other two. So I do have to do a tiny bit more work. All right, so I've got a 2 squared plus a 10 squared is equal to a C squared. So it's going to give me 4 plus 100 equals C squared. So I've got 104 is equal to C squared. I'm going to square root both sides. So that's going to give me the square root of 104. All right, so AC that's the square root of 104. All right, so um, I know that's going to be a little bit bigger than 10, approximately, if I type this into my calculator. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out what type of thing this is. Well, I see two sides that are the exact same length. So if I go back and I take a look at these guys, so those two, this is telling me that AB is congruent to B, C. All right, so I'm now, this is my justification. My justification is I have all of this work that supports what I want to say. If A, B, and B, C are congruent to each other, so two sides are congruent to each other, that means that this guy for sure is isosceles. But maybe there's more. So I'm going to go down to part three, and this is calculating the slopes. So I'm going to go back to my color coding. This time I'm going to restart again with a B. So those were my distances. Now I'm going to do slopes. Remember slope, we use M. So I'm going to use the notation that I'm used to. So the slope of a B. All right, go back to the picture. You can either start at A and go to B, or you can start at B and go to A. I think I'm just going to follow the order that I named it. So if I start at A, it looks like I'm going to go up four units. So that has a rise of four, and I am going to go right six units. So that has a run of positive six. Now you can simplify this if you want to, but you don't have to. So if you wanted to, the slope would turn into two-thirds. Again, you don't have to, though. We're just trying to figure out some sort of a relationship between the slopes. All right, let's go through and take a look at the next one. All right, so I had slope from B to C. I'm just going to follow the order that I named it. So if I start at B, if I start at B, remember it's a rise over run, I'm going to go down 6. So that's negative. And then I'm going to go right 4. So that is positive 4. If you wanted to simplify, you would get negative 3 over 2, or you could just leave it as negative 6 over 4. All right, I'm seeing a relationship right now between A, B, and B, C. All right, let's take a look at the last one. So my slope. I'm going to stick with the same order that I called it earlier, which was A, C. So I'm going to start at A, and I'm going to go to C. Now, regardless of if you decided to go backwards, maybe you went from C to A, we'll get the exact same slope. So if I start at A, I would go down 2, so that's negative 2, over. And then from there, I would go right 10, so it's positive 10. Again, you can simplify, but you don't have to. You can leave it as just negative 2 over 10. Okay, now let's compare these slopes. None of them should be the exact same thing because in a triangle, none of the sides are going to be parallel. However, 
you might have two sides that are perpendicular to each other, and I believe that we do. If you take a look at the two-thirds slope for AB and the negative three-halves slope for BC, we've got that double flip happening. So if I take two-thirds and I flip it over, I get three over two. That's the first flip. Then we want to flip the sign also. That's the second flip. So if I take two-thirds and I do a double flip to it, I get negative three halves, which is the exact same thing as BC. So basically what I'm being told is that line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment BC. If they're perpendicular, then I'm being told that this is a right triangle. So what I would say about this triangle, so triangle ABC, is an isosceles right triangle. And my justification is all of my work here. Okay, moving on to the second one. This one's a quadrilateral, so we're going to have a four-sided object. Um, should look familiar. I think we had something like this on the last test. So again, let's try to do this pause back and forth business. So I'm going to go ahead and pause at this time, and I'm going to graph all of these lines. Additionally, I'm going to label each corner, like A, B, C, D. So I'll graph my lines first. So go ahead and graph your lines. And then when we come back, I am going to label the corners with you so we can follow along with each other's work. Okay, so here are all of my lines uh, plotted. You'll notice that I wasn't, you can tell which ones I graphed. I just graphed them in the order they were given to me, but you could see I wasn't quite sure where the quadrilateral was going to occur. So I might have extra line segments around. Now, if that's distracting to you, then go ahead and erase the extra parts. So I want to look for the shape that looks like it's all enclosed. So I'm just going to get rid of the extra parts of the line that I just don't need. Now, if they're not distracting to you, then just leave it. It's fine. So I'm going to erase these. There's my quadrilateral. So there's the four-sided object. All right, I think I'm just going to start in the top left corner for labeling. So if I call this point A, B, and I'm just going to work my array around the shape, C and D. All right, I need to be able to identify the type of quadrilateral that's formed. All right, so I would take out my basic shapes sheet, and I know that it's a four-sided object, so the whole idea of being triangles is totally out the door. Additionally, I wouldn't call it like a hexagon or a pentagon or an octagon. That's more than four sides, so those guys are out the door also. Basically, my four options here are uh, square, which doesn't look like it, uh, rectangle, doesn't look like it either. It's close, though. Um, it could be a trapezoid. It could be a kite. It could be a parallelogram. I think those are my five options here. So if I take a look at this and I take a look at the equations themselves, I see a similarity happening up here. So if I just focus a little bit on some slopes here. I see that in the very first equation, I have a slope of one fourth. I additionally see the exact same slope on the third equation. So I would say that those two equations, so starting at negative five, with a one-fourth slope and starting at positive six with a one-fourth slope are parallel because they have the exact same slopes. So I'm going to go back to my picture. I'm going to start at negative five down here. And the one-fourth slope, remember, it's kind of a small number. So it's got more run, less rise, which means I think it's this line segment CD. So I'm going to go ahead and put an arrow there showing that they're parallel. And then I can see the other one across the top there that's also parallel. So I think my justification so far, I'm not totally sure what it is yet, is that um, I know by labeling my corners, I can now, instead of saying, well, this line and this line are parallel, I can actually say the line segments themselves. So I would say that, kind of using the green here that I've used, that the slope 
of, oh, I don't even, yeah, well, let's go ahead and say that. Let's do the slope of AB is equal to the slope of, what was it, CD. Those are the same. So what that tells me is that AB, remember, parallel to CD. All right. Um, I think I've got some more parallel business going on up here. So let's take a little, little bit further look. So I see a slope of 3, and I see another slope of 3. Now, I know they're not the exact same line because their y-intercepts are different. All right, so that means that the other two lines are parallel to each other. All right, so I've got the slope of uh, BC is equal to the slope of DA. So that tells me that BC is parallel to DA. All right, so I have, well, let's see. It's definitely not a trapezoid anymore, so that guy's off the table. And it's definitely not a kite anymore. That one's off the table. Uh, it could still be a rectangle. It could still be a square. At this point, it could still be a parallelogram. Mm -hmm, that's it. Um, however, with a rectangle and a square, Yes, the sides opposite each other are parallel. However, the opposite, well, the corners are going to be 90 degrees. And I don't think these guys are 90 degrees. So if we take a look back at the slopes, now I'm just comparing uh, between the green and the purple. So if I take a look between those guys, notice that I don't have the double flip happening. Okay? I don't have the double flip happening. Um... So I don't have perpendicular, all right? Well, if the opposite sides are parallel, and I have shown that by identifying my corners, saying some information here, so I have enough to back it up. I believe we're at the point where the, we have enough information. So based off of this, so because of these two things, I would say that shape A, B, C, D, is a parallelogram. Make sure that you work on the you try section.